21st century and the evolution of the spiritual involvement of the female sex. And therefore I will start with Adam. In the beginning, when the world was created and God decided that he needed a vessel whereby to give his energy, his totality, he created a vessel that we called Adam. Adam was the first, if you will, call it a metaphor, call it a person. But Adam was created to, to be the viaduct, the vessel, for all the energy that would ever be incurred in a world called Malkut, or kingdom, the world in which we live. And therefore, at the beginning, he was created male and female. Hence, all of us today are created male and female, meaning that in every male, there's female, and in every female, there's male. The same way as we know on, on a very physical level, that the hormone balance, even in every person's body, entails hormones which are both male and female. And therefore, Adam, at the first instance of creation, was given the totality of all the energy. But what happened? They decided upstairs that it really wasn't fair to have one entity, which was unisex which rather that there needed to be, even in the world in which we live, a balance between positive energies, positive energies. And so there was created a division between the two levels of existence, one which they called male, and the other in which they called female. That female existence which came into being at the time right after the period of correction was brought there to be the balance, the molder of the energy that would be brought down from above. Hence, at that point in time, the female aspect was given the job of creating and molding the viaduct by which the energy of the creator would be given to the peoples at large, hence Eve. And then it said that there was corruption. Whatever that corruption is, is not for this period of discussion, but there was a, a corruption within the confines of Adam. Kabbalistically speaking, and the first time that it's ever been mentioned, Kabbalistically speaking, the corruption was Adam forgot that he was this level called Zerampi. He was this level of energy that only was a channel, a viaduct by which to manifest the energy of the Creator and he reached to the state that he now was. He was now the motivator of the energy and not from that creative force by which he was to be a channel for. And therefore, the female entity of that particular <coughs> manifestation was reduced because, and we will learn, that the female aspect in a, in a couple which was created, especially from the beginning, were created on spiritual balance points, which means that Eve could not be greater in her spiritual nature than Adam's, because she was the counterpart. And so what happened? She was degraded, if you will. She was made into a lesser entity because he now decided that he was as the creator, that all the energy that would happen when God says to him, now you're going to be responsible for what happens to the next generation, the next generation, to our time. It'll be in your hands because you've forgotten that your channel of energy comes only from the creator. And then, henceforth, through the ages, through the generations, there was this depletion, total depletion, of the idea that there was a balance between the creative power and the creator. And that's why they, to this time, it was called the age of Zedam and it was a negative time, because as you see what it happened from the time of Adam until the time of the flood, and most of these things took precedence because of their inability to understand that they were only the viaduct of the energy of the creator, and therefore they, were, they misused 
their sexual functions in a way that caused tremendous negativity in the world. Until there came a time in which we call the time of Abraham. And they, according to scripture, says that Abraham was the first person to believe in the one God theory. That there was only one particular force that reigned this world, that everything was under the influence of the category field of a divine creator. In essence, what did Abraham say? He says, I now recognize that all the things that move the world as which we know it come from one divine source. And I, as male, am now a channel for that energy to bring it to the people. Hence, there you see, for the first time, male and female. What he had brought to fruition was the fact that the woman was a parallel and that their energy was equal to each other at that stage. And therefore, we find Abraham the Patriarch being the first person to ever realize to, and to bring the woman to the forefront. And any time there is terrible negativity within the world in which we live, it is always the malchut that has to rise to that level, take it by its ears, and turn it around. For instance, at the time of the golden calf, now most of you have learned this before, that the women at the time of the golden calf refused to allow their gold to be used for the purchase of creating this golden calf. So what does that mean? That, they, they, that only because of the idea of idolatry? No, there's something more than that. That until this time, the women were almost like chattel. They were not given rights, they had no ability. But because they had somehow the idea, the, the vision to see that this particular golden calf, that this incident would cause there to be again a break, a break in the idea that the male is only a channel of energy, and now he was going on to another thing, idolatry. He was going to become something more than he was. And that's why there were so many affairs and sodomy, et cetera, and so forth that happened then, because he lost sight of who he was and what he was created for. Today we do the same thing. Most of us, each and every day, lose sight of who we are and what we were created for. The only difference is there because the mass of negativity was so great that it caused this tremendous desertion from spiritual teachings. And therefore the women who were there, who were gifted enough to see this particular break in that curtain, said no. I refuse, I refuse to accept the fact of degradation. I do not want to be the vessel for the male who is going to cause the world to go into total darkness. And that's what she refused to do. She refused to allow the world to become engulfed in this darkness. And therefore, and therefore it says that when the Creator gave the Torah to the Jews, he gave it first to the women. Why did he give it first to the women in that respect? Because even the Creator knew that the spiritual level of the household, the spiritual level of those people that were to come afterwards would have to derive their energy from the female, from the manifestation of the world of kingdom, the world in which we live. And therefore, it was given through the woman to the male. And the refusal at that time was the refusal to accept less that they thought that their vessel would be able to handle. These women appear again in many generations. And in fact, almost in every crisis, where the world is about and stands on the edge of destruction, we know that there was a woman there to bring it to another level, i.e., when the world was to be destroyed by the Egyptians and the first males were being thrown into the sea, Masha took this little baby Moses and reared her as her son in her own home, and he would then grow to be the spiritual leader of Israel. However, had it not been for that assistance or the awakening of that energy in the world of kingdom, there would never have been a Masha to take this child and to make it grow. There would never be the seed by which 
the fire of the channel of energy of the life force of God would be revealed, but only through the hand of Vacha. And even though we speak of our Bible as being very chauvinistic, and yet if we look at it carefully enough, we will see that in every single place where there was a lack of light, where there was a darkness, there was somebody or a metaphor or a being that was a female entity that represented the world of kingdom that held on with its teeth and said, I will refuse to allow my spiritual energy to be diminished. I will not allow that to happen. And at those times in our history is where you find the revitalization and the love of the female capacity. As a mother to a child, when the child needs the help, the mother is there to softly and lovingly lift it to another level. Throughout the history of mankind, as you will see, that happened amongst the Jewish people, and there was always the female aspect that was there to draw it further. <coughs> but why, for such a long period of time, have men ruled over the woman? Why was the female, in, in the history of mankind, almost throughout the world, only until, I don't know whether it was in the 1920s that the female got the right to vote in the United States, but the, oh, continually through, the his, through our history, the female has always been downtrodden. Uh, prejudice in the workplace, prejudice in the schools, prejudice, et cetera, and so forth. And the answer is a quite simple answer. But how I get to the answer, I hope you'll follow me. In the beginning, when the days were created, the days were created with a given energy each one of the days, whether it was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. The center of the week, which was Wednesday, Wednesday was the day, the fourth day of creation, in which the sun and the moon were created. And within the sun and the moon, there was a battle. Who would reign? Because the moon wanted the same light that was drawn by the sun. And they had two powerful forces vying for the energy. And it's also called the day of Moses. Okay. But what happened? The creator said, you will have your time, and then you will have your time. On the fourth day of creation, it was decided that until the time of the Messiah, until the age of Aquarius, there would be the ruling of the sun, male, Zerampin energy, that would rule over the moon, which was female, because the sun has no, the moon has no light, but that which it receives from the sun, right? The same way I am saying that the female has no energy more than the capacity of her mate to bear with her. Therefore, for the struggles of the females throughout the generations was there because it was not the time yet for the life force of the female to shine equal to the light of her male counterpart. And therefore, she was downtrodden for all this period in history. Follow me? Okay. Now, until a given point, that given point happened and is happening right now. Because if you notice, if you've taken notice of what is happening in the world out there, you will see that for the past 10 or 20 years, women have been getting far better in the fields of education, of business, of what, wherever there were male counterparts. Today, the female is slowly rising to the same position, and who knows, we may see a female president of the United States within a very short period of time. However, however, what I wanted to say is, is not chauvinistic in nature, but to say that because we are now on time and on the edge of serious depletion of our spiritual energies, serious depletion of our spiritual energies, 
It is why the female is now rising to the occasion in which they will now have to take up those forces and create in them a world by which the female will now have to carry the ball to the male because we are about to reach the time where the sun and the moon will have equal light. And that's what's happening in this particular period in time. And that's why we see around us the manifestation of, for instance, HP, Hewlett Packer is run by a woman, Mattel is run by tremendous organizations and powers in the hands of people that 20 years ago could not happen. And the reason that it is happening is because the female, the aspect called Malchut, the aspect called kingdom, is now in the about to rise to the place where the female will have to direct that male energy. And that, by the way, happened in the time of Deborah. Deborah was married to a man called Barak. His name was called Barak because she knew that he wasn't, uh, um, he wasn't. And what happened though, she would take the candles, the light and the oil for the temple and she would give it to her husband and, and he, he would have her, him, take it to the temple and they would use it to manifest the light in the temple. And that's how we got the name Barak, which means light, energy, a light bulb of energy. And the reason that she did that, listen to how smart she was, the reason that she did that was to make him feel that he was spiritually effective that he had a role in the life. After all, this woman, who is a judge of all of Israel, and she's married to, he's Mrs. So-and-so. They're not happy for this world today. So instead of becoming Mrs. So-and-so, she created a place in her life by which to make him manifest so that he felt satisfied. And that is a very important lesson for us today. Because those of us who manifest an energy and there are many of us, I'm sure, that are married to men that, not myself, but there are many. <laughs> there are many of us that are married to men who are not as spiritually involved or evolved. So there are two things to do, to divorce them or to make them believe they are. I choose to make them believe they are, okay? And how do you do that? It becomes their idea. It becomes their aspect. When you do, let's say you, you, you want to do a, a, a meditation or you want to do something spiritual, you tell, you tell them how wonderful they do it and how much energy they generate. You feel their vibration all over the house. <laughs> and you feel how wonderful it is when they do it. They, they uplift you so much. Voila. You're not made a friend instead of an enemy. And that's a very important lesson. That's what Devorah did to Barak. Because she made him feel self-sustained. That he no longer felt the guilt and he no longer felt the jealousy to be married to a woman which was that powerful. And therefore, now, in this generation, the women, the souls of those women that refused at the time of the golden calf, that refuse to allow their spiritual level to go down, those are the souls which have come back today to learn and to be a part of an awakening of a spiritual level that had never been seen before, i.e. the evolution of the female to a place where she stands equal to her male counterpart and sometimes the light may be a little bit greater than that of the male. But that doesn't necessarily, people come to me all the time and say, what do I do? My husband isn't interested. I can't reach them. And sometimes we find that, particularly in mainstream circles, you know, eh, what do we need this for? I mean, after all, they're busy, they've got their business to run, they've got, they've got golf, they've got all <laughs> kinds of things that are so, you know, fulfilling in their life. Why do they have to go through this? So how do we get a, a man to reach a level that he needs it by, not by telling him that he needs it, but by showing him how you have changed because of that which you have done. And how your attitude towards him has changed. And once that happens, then you have a door. The worst thing that a person can do is say, 
I know, I am, you, this is what I'd like you to do. The minute that we were to do that, finished. We've closed the door. And we've closed the door maybe forever. Unfortunately, we're not smart enough sometimes to realize that the best way is the way of non-resistance. Okay, you know what? You do your thing, and then when you come back, if you have a little bit of time, we'll do my thing. Until my thing becomes, hey, you know what? This ain't bad. And slowly but surely, this is the way it happens. <coughs> this is the way it happens. But the souls that are here today are those souls which refuse to, to be degraded at the time of the golden care. And, and by the way, the souls which are here are pure, are pure than those that had been before. Now, why are they pure? Why are they pure? Anybody knows? How many times have we incarnated to be where we are? Every time we've incarnated, those of us that are still sitting as human beings, means that we went to either to another level of existence or, or, we stayed where we were, but we're certainly not less than when this particular soul that sits in our body came into it for the first time. So, and now, especially since we've reached a period of time where things are very rapid and very fast, the fast and rapid means that there's no space in motion, and we're changing that. We're changing that, and everything that we see around us is leading us to the place, leading us to the place where we will see the total evolvement of the spirit. And that is why people are more spiritual or more spiritually involved and involved than ever before. Because the soul matter which is there has cleared away so many levels of negativity that it is now capable of seeing more than it ever did before. When you chip away veils, when you become more involved in the spiritual thing, it's sort of like, have you ever touched a book and felt by your hand the energy that's inside of it? A lot of us can do that, a lot of us feel that. The reason that that happens is because in every single thing there is atom. There are atoms. And within the confines of those atoms, it has an energy, be it positive, or negative. The same way is when you think your thought and pass it on to another person, the, the waves, even though we cannot see them in the air, they're there. They're there. And when you give your wave, you pass it on to the next person, however far from you they may be, if somebody that maybe you've never met before, yet that vibration, that wave will pass, depending on how intuitive that second party is. The same thing happens in your home, by the way. If you put in a vibration which is positive, and how do you put a positive vibration? Well, we've learned in the classes, and you know that you don't move into a home where there was illness, where there was discontent, where there was divorce, where there was all kinds of negative things in the house. It's not a good idea to buy it. Two, it can be cleaned out. But there's still an essence. If the, if the high priest could say that he went to see a house and find leprosy within the confines of the walls, and he had to close it up and come back and sometimes to destroy the entire house to its foundation, I don't know how many of us are strong enough to move into that environment and to change it. Better not to move into that type of an environment. So therefore, we see that there is definite possibilities in the places by which we live to influence our metaphysical and our physical being. As a woman, when you move into a dwelling, into a new house, first of all, there is a, a thing that, that would be a, a nice thing to do, and that is to take a glass with water and salt and to walk through the house on the sides of the posts of the house, throughout the whole house, every room, through the entire house, okay? And then close all the windows and take sage, or frankincense, sage is better, and burn it through the entire house, okay? And it depends on who you're married to, maybe open the windows three or four hours before they get home. But if not, then 
If he understands what we're talking about, then fine, then you can leave it. And then open it up. Why do I say close the windows of the house? Because we want to take any negative energy that is there. And we want to use that energy to release it at once, sort of like to destroy it. And then open the windows and has it fly away and make it neutral, to make it neutral. The water and the salt, those of you know that salt is a conductor, you know that salt is a conductor of energy, and water is a conductor of mercy, of, 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 of positive energy. And therefore, by doing this, we are what we call, we ground the house. Ground the house with positive things. Ground the house, not for negative things. Ground the house for only positive entities. And also, as a woman, there's an expression. And the expression is that a female destroys or builds. But now we can understand why it says that. Because the same way as the sperm is moved into the egg and it is molded by that channel, and then it becomes manifest in the female, right? That is, by the way, why in Jewish law, the child is governed by the mother, the birth mother, whatever, because we know where the manifest of Malchut is coming from. We can see the female. Where the male has come from, according to Jewish law, there's, that, well, there is a way to know to stay, but according to the law, there is no way really to know the absolute of the, fe of the male. But of the female, there is an absolute. And as long as that absolute is there, the child is judged a Jewish child if he comes out of the Jewish mother, regardless of who the father might be. Now, that is why it says that a female either destroys or builds. Because now we're talking about a vessel. A vessel which manifests the life force of the creator. And that takes the energy which has been given by its male and moves it to a place whereby he is manipulated, not only to manipulate, but manipulated into a place where he grows and becomes nourished and becomes involved or he's involved in other things. The life force itself is pushing us to reach that period in time where we understand that we have this amount of vessel to fill. We fill it either with the nonsense that's out in the street or we fill it with life force energy. But that much that we fill is the amount we take home to our husband, take home to our family, take home to those that are around us and those that we love, whatever we fill that force with is that's the force that we give to those that we love the most. And therefore it says that a woman can destroy or a woman can build because she has the ability in her hand so as the egg molds the sperm into the vessel that comes from the woman. So the life force in her home comes from that vessel, the same vessel that the life force comes to the female. It is in her hands, it is in my hands, it is in your hands to decide on how much energy will enter into your home. When we make an action, a spiritual action, uh, an elevating action in our parameter, whatever that might be, whether it's our home or in our community or in our environment or in our love affair with our loved ones, we take and build and create a home which can develop and nurture spiritual quality. When we take that same essence and we use it for the desire to perceive for ourselves alone, we usher in another kind of energy. That's with Hashem. Those of us that are here with us today, hopefully, will be a part of the tomorrow in which there will be totality of life and abundance of energy for all of us. And those countries, by the way, if you look, it says the final enemy of the world will come from where? From Iran. That will be the final force that will go against those, those of you that have read any of the astrology books, the final force that will go against, go against the world, Iran, Iraq, and that part of the world. And that part of the world is still living in the third world environment and intellect where a woman is still chattel. And therefore, they will be the enemy of the future because they have not 
evolve onto a spiritual plane to understand that without the world of Malchut, without the world of abundance and of light and the ability of the arousal of the female to refuse the golden calf, then that tomorrow can only be chaos. Thank you. Karen, you've said that women are inherently more spiritual than men. What does that mean in terms of her role within the family? Well, we know that in the Torah, and I think that's where we should go for our answer, there's a precept, and the precept is that the women light the candles on Friday night. And the reason for that is, is that, so to speak, they welcome the light into their home. The same way as a woman, when she's pregnant, is basically responsible for that life force with inside of herself. Because of that life force, when it becomes manifest into the home as a child, then she is still responsible because the female represents the vessel. And in the vessel is the formation that all life that exists from it. Also in, the, in, the, in a marriage relationship to a husband and a wife, it's the duty of the vessel, of the female, of the foundation, if you will, to bring as much light as possible in and the amount of light and the amount of the light force of God that she exerts into her home and into her environment is the amount of light which will exist for her family, i.e. her husband or her children. Karen, what is the man's role in spirituality versus the woman? Basically, the man's role and the woman's role is obviously the same, to receive as much light force energy and to share as much as possible. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, that there's not much difference in the matter of roles. It's only, if you notice, in our world, for instance, you'll see that you have more women involved in spiritual movements than you do men. The men are usually more involved in the, in the mundane type of making a living, go-getting, and the idea of the women is to bring him more so into the spiritual realm, which is a very difficult thing to do, by the way. But it's sort of like, there are many, I don't want to say that there aren't, there are many, many men that are indeed very, very spiritual. But it is not the norm. The man's role, obviously, is to be able to produce and generate and to become closer to, to spiritual things. And it's far more difficult for the man than it is for the woman because it's sort of like the generator. It keeps on giving energy out, it's charging out, it's charging out. And it doesn't know to recharge its own battery. The man's role is to learn that he must recharge his own battery by getting closer to spiritual subjects. Karen, you had mentioned that it was the woman's um, job to create a man, to make a man feel important. What is the man supposed to do for a woman spiritually? One of the things it says in the Zohar is that a, a woman usually, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't have to come back for herself, but she comes back in the next lifetime, supposedly, only to help her mate. That's what it says. And normally speaking, a woman finds herself with a man that is of her spiritual level. Uh, there are many laws involved in what happens if the woman is perhaps more elevated than he is, and there's the whole idea of divorce and death, et cetera, and so forth. So the idea that, a, and a matter of fact, there are three things that is asked of a man, right? Namely, that he is supposed to support his wife, to give her an adequate place to live, and of course to have and engender sex with her and have children with her, et cetera, and so forth. And by doing so, by the way, by implementing his seed in her, it is injecting her with that, if you will, generated energy to reach the levels of spirituality. His job is to be able to, if you will, raise her to as high a place as she can reach. It's sort of like, if you will, it's a, maybe it's a, a bad, uh, analysis, but the only one I know is that he holds the string of the kite. And it's his job by the wind to make it flow as high as it can. The man's job is to be able to form the seat by which, with his energy, that can propel this other end of himself, which is the female, to flow to the highest heights that she can. It's his job to give her that basis. It's sort of like when you have a child that's already grown, to allow him to walk and to give him the freedom to go as far as he can. That's the male's role in the spiritual realm. 
Karen, why is it that a woman in the Bible has such a great um, contribution, yet the men get all the recognition? And if so, why is it, is it supposed to be this way? That's a very good question. And the answer is, I think I had given the answer, didn't I? But I'll give it again. At the time of creation, there was a conflict. On the fourth day of creation, the God, God created the sun and the moon. And the moon said, why can't I have the same light as the sun? And there was this tremendous conflict. Also, we know that the fourth day of creation is given the aspect of Moses. It's Moses' day, Moshe Rabbeinu. Very powerful. But what happened is, God said, we will let the light of the sun reign because the people as we know them have no light of their own. We need something to represent the vessel. So the vessel became the moon, which took the light only from the sun. But, God said, that there will reign a time in history where the light of the sun will be equal to the light of the moon. Fortunately or unfortunately, because we are the vessel, we are the place where we create the light. As a matter of fact, uh, it says in the Bible that during the time of Moses when, when the Jews were rebelling in Egypt, it was a woman that refused to give the gold. It was the woman that told the spies, you know, be careful as to what you say. It was always the, the impetus of the woman that tried to build the fences, and in those times it was the man that destroyed it. But because it was not yet the time, God said that there will become a time when the moon and the sun will have its same light. And that will be when, when there is a quality in the spiritual level, there is a quality in the cosmos. And that will happen at the time of the Mashiach. The female being represented by what we call the vessel, okay, means that she represents the moon, which cannot shine as the sun because it wasn't yet the time for that to happen. Even today we see spacklings of it, if you will. You know, like you find people that are running major corporations that are today women, which never before happened. And we find women becoming more involved and, and becoming more important in, in the business world. It's still only the beginnings, it's the start, it's the seedlings, but we see that the time of the woman is absolutely approaching. And as we get closer to the, to the beginning of the messianic period, as we get closer to the time when the light force will shine so brightly, then the women will then take its proper place. It's like a seed that has been gendered into the earth, but that the day eventually will come, and as we see that it is now happening, that that seed will come forward. So that's the reason why, even though we see many prominent women, and we know if we read uh, the Bible, that many of the things that have happened, I've said this in lectures before, that there has never been a revolution, a resurgence of energy in the world that wasn't sponsored somehow by a woman. If it wasn't for Bacha, we wouldn't have a Moses. And that we see that the woman was there, but she was always in the place of the womb, concealing, hiding that life force energy, and then bringing it out and pushing it forward like, like the wind, and being the wind that makes it fly. That was the place of the woman. She becomes the airplane now. Karen, a woman always uh, supposed to be the background of a man. You know, that's, that's interesting. And of course, from what I've just said, you realize that there is a, like it says in Ecclesiastes, for everything there is a time and a place. But you know, the answer to that question, I find more interesting. The light force of God should always be in the background to the human being. Because we don't see the light force. We know it exists, and inside it feels good when it's there, right? But it's quiet. People that are spiritually evolved are more quiet inside. So it's not a question of being in the background. Sometimes when you create a beautiful thing, you, you want to stand back and watch it happen. And on the physical level, on the very physical level, we find that, that when you motivate anything, and if your nature is such that you can appreciate and enjoy it as you watch something grow, a child, you let it grow and it becomes hopefully what you, what you think it should be and it becomes all that it could be. You influence it then when it's there, you say, no, go on your own. Be what you can be. 
The woman's role is exactly that, to be the motivating force to plant the flower and to seed it, to water it, to love it, and then let it be the most beautiful flower that it could be. That's always been the role of the woman because she's always been that vessel, this world that we call kingdom or malchut. But as I said, there will be a time, and it is happening, that the woman will also be allowed to be the flower. Karen, if it's a woman's role to save the world, why do you think we don't have more women that are leaders? And do you think that women should be the great leaders or just great first ladies? Interesting. First of all, the first part is, I do not believe that a woman should stand only in the background and let the world be led by, by men. And I also didn't say that I think the world would be saved by women. What I did say is that when there were times in history that the world stood at the brink and needed the, 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 the aid of a leader, came along a botcher who found Moses in the water and, and grew him up to be what he would be. If it wasn't that Bacha had taken him from the bulrushes, Moses would never have been able to be what he was. Kabbalistically, we ask the question also, well, Moses had to be what he was, right? So someone had to find, but that's not the idea. When the Jews were about to be exterminated in Persia, so came uh, Esther, who came to be the queen of, of Persia, and therefore by which saving the Jews. And we found that in the time of the Maccabeans, when, when uh, Jerusalem was to be destroyed, and the Jews again were, were at the brink of extermination, there came great female people who, again, worked their ways into the house of the general and managed to get him drunk and to bore a spear into his head, and by which confused the entire army, and of course they lost the war. And here's things that we see over and over and over again that the woman has that role of being the one to m sort of open the door to make that thing happen. Um, and also I do believe that now, as I said before, that there is a time which is dawning that, that women will be able to have their rightful ro role also in the world of the business. But remember, the problem there is very simple. It was always, if you will, the masculine role to be the provider. And because he's always been this stereotype provider, he's always been in the forefront. And by saying that a woman is more spiritual, it means almost together that she would have to be less involved in the total material. She'd be more involved in the things that are the untouchable things, the, 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 the essence of things. So that's why she's always, if you will, been in the background. But I, I don't call that the background. I, 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 I choose to say that she's always been the motivating force that makes the seed grow. And uh, today we are seeing more and more women being able to put together the world of the physical and the spiritual. What words of advice would you offer us women? For all of us, we all fall. We all become involved in the, in the mundane world. We, we, we always get involved in the, the emotional aspects of life. And, and I think the main thing we have to learn is, for instance, when we, we fly in an airplane and we go above the clouds, there's total calm. There is no more jumping, the plane doesn't bounce. You fly and you glide and everything is fine. What we have to learn in life is that we always have to see that there's a place above the clouds. That the chaos that's there for us today is there only as part of a movie. That if we move aside and we elevate ourselves to that place of spirituality, that place of saying, I know that it's going to be okay. I take a step back from myself. I can reach the place which is above the clouds. And in reaching that space, we, don't have, we can look down on the, on the chaos and treat it as if it's someplace away from ourself. Most of us as mothers and, and, uh, and women that, that are sitting here certainly today know that there is a spiritual side. We have also to remember that that spiritual side also exists 
when we go totally crazy and away from ourselves. You know, it's simple when we're in a, a, a mode like this to say that we want to become more spiritual, we want to become closer to, the, we want to give more sharing, we want to be more part of the world. What happens is that the other side, that negative side, is so, so clever. He doesn't decide to grab you at a time when you're in a place where you're doing meditation or you feel good. He grabs you at the time when your husband comes home and says something that you just freak, freak, freak out at. And you say, what do you mean? You say, blah, blah, blah. What happened to your spirituality? That's the place where it has to be. Not in this format. The same way as who's a spiritual person? The one that works in spirituality? The one that lives spirituality. The one that knows at the time when you should freak out that you don't freak out. That you learn that when the guy coming up to you and he wants to ask you a question and you say, what a stupid question, I don't have to answer that. And you say to yourself, oh, wait a second, the light's there as it's here. I think it's a stupid question, but did I create it? I have to accept each person where they're at. If I can do that, if I can do that, then I deserve to be called a spiritual person. It isn't somebody that sits on a mountain and meditates on his navel all day. It's in the real working world. It's in the way that we appreciate one another. And, and like they say, women are catty. You know, women are, are more involved with what the other person wears and what the other person does. And if we understand that each and every one of us is part of that energy, because of our souls, that each part of our souls is part of God. And what's there to be envious of? He gave you a package to work with, and it's your job to take that package and make the most out of it. He gave me a different package. That's all it means. Because one can never, can never judge or, 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 or see what another person might have, be it if they're more beautiful or they have more money or they have more power. Inside, in the quiet of their home, Nobody ever knows what the other one's package is. And if we can really live that way, then and only then can we call ourselves a spiritual person. Thank you for coming.